So what I'm going to do to to uh, to tip this off is is I want to just kind of set the stage for what we're going to look at. So basically, we're going to focus mostly on the Avoca Mobile Field Worker application, which is a native application, as Rod was kind of talking about. Um, you can get that out of the uh, the iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store, and that has all the heavy lifting that you would normally have to build into your application. You know, already kind of baked into it, and then it's going to work in synergy with the Avoca Transact platform. Um, so really kind of removing that barrier, uh, kind of what, what Rod was talking about, you know, kind of making it simple to do. So so that's kind of the context of a lot of what we're going to look at today. And if we look at that and how that fits into the Avoca Transact, you know, actually above that red box, yesterday, in last week's or two weeks ago webinar, we, we talked more about the online aspect and, and really focused on the web plugin and the self-service portal. Um, but it's all... Uh, working off of the same platform, right? So transaction managers still managing the transactions both for a field worker installation and a you know portal and web plugin all at the same time. And that composer aspect where you're tying your business closer to the data collection application, it's still the same, right? So that one you know transaction or that one form that they build, if you want to call it a smart form, as they deploy it out, that could both be in the field as well as you know, on a website, um, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, many times there are separate things you want to do, you know, in the field worker case, you may want to, to have pictures taken. Um, but, you know, if it's something that could be used in both, that form designer could put a rule that says I need an attachment and on the field worker side it's it's taking a camera and on the, you know, web service, self-service portal, it's asking for you to upload the attachment, right? So you can still do, uh, you know, one in the same. So again, that's kind of the focus of what we're going to look at, and that's how it fits into the uh, into the um, into the uh, platform as a whole. And again, we'll focus on some use cases with Field Worker, and then we'll kind of back out and look at what it takes to build one of these, because that's really a, a big aspect to it. So with that, let's jump into the demo. And so what I'm going to do actually is share my screen. So this is actually just a screen. This is just a webcam looking down on my on my um, uh, iPad here, and so you can see the the native application here. And this is something that we've uh, we've downloaded um, from the iTunes Store. I can launch it, and basically what it's going to do is allow me to log in. You can see in the upper right hand corner. Actually, you can't see. I'll slide over. You can kind of see I'm in a connected mode, um, so it's connected to a server. And so the field worker at the beginning of his day or, or beginning of his trip, you know, he's going to do this kind of, of uh, exercise to actually log in, synchronize, and, and pull down. And what we're doing when we do that is we're actually filling this forms bucket with all the forms that we're going to need and can use out in the field. So this is the equivalent of what our um, paper form is, you know, in our briefcase today, right? Um, and then I'm also going to have a task list. This is a, uh, items that have actually been assigned to me by the organization for me to go out and, and fulfill, right? And so, uh, and in this case, you can see um, I've got three items actually uh, already assigned there. And then I've got history. And part of the history is going to be, if I'm out in the field, and, and as Rod kind of pointed out in the slides, in, in today's world, many times you do have connectivity. I've got 3G connectivity and all that, but many times you're doing inspections in a spot where the connection doesn't work or, or it's going up and down and it's causing more grief. So you have to be able to go offline and that's what this this application is allowing us to do. So it's going to allow us to go completely disconnected and, and if I'm disconnected when I fill out one of these applications and save it, it's actually going to store it locally on a secure database and then synchronize back up to the server, back to Transaction Manager once I'm um, reconnected. So that's kind of what we're going to look at here. So let's go in um, we've synchronized up. Let's go in and take a look at our task list, and we can see um, three different items. Now, again, I created a, a, an organization, if you will, over in Transaction Manager for the user ID that I logged in as, and then and basically set up a grouping. That told me what forms I have access to and then allowed also assignments to, to, to be made. So in this case, I've got a, uh, you know, a home visit. So this would be kind of a government worker. Um, I've got a uh, well inspection, so, so someone out in the field actually inspecting a, a, a gas well, and then an energy audit for, for, for a firm 
who's going to go out and, and put that in there. So I've got a variety of things. This normally wouldn't be in one user's kind of capability, but I created a, a hybrid user, if you will, and, and assigned that to them. So one of the things I'll do is let's open an item. I get a description that can be assigned by the, um, you can either be assigned by transaction manager, or it could be an API call from one of your existing systems to make this assignment. And I can easily go into the application um, and then also click map and actually see where it is on the map, go back to it, um, and then I can go into the to the actual form itself. Right? So you know, so as I'm getting ready for my day and picking out all the different places I've got to go, I can see it on the map, I can use um, items that, that could could help me, you know, navigate there based on the device if, if I've got that built into my device. And then once I'm out into the field, and in this case I'm going to do the uh, assessment for you know this particular um, person I, I can actually go in you can see I've already got well, information already filled out so it's already there you can also notice here this locate button. now this is actually knowing where I'm at right now with the device and where this is going to come into play and it doesn't even have to be visible you can basically record where that field worker is when they're filling in the form and when they were out there so you can be sure that they're actually you know, on site where they said they were. And then from the field worker perspective, if they want to toggle the map um, to, to actually see, you know, more detail, just like we saw over on the other map, you know, I can actually drill down and actually see, you know, that's where it is. And so in this case, we can say, yep, that's all good. I click next. And now I'm coming in to the, the actual filling of the form. Now, keep in mind, too, we talked about this um, native application aspect. So if we look at the, the wrapper here, the chrome of the application on the, the um, outer edges, that's really the field worker application. And then this blue area inside, this is really what came from Composer. So this is the business who de derived the navigation pane here, what fields are in there. So they're in control of what information they want to be able to collect in the field and what's going to happen to it, um, as well as rules that go into it. Um, so, so I can come in and start, you know, seeing it was a referral. What time, you know, were you there? The, the controls are going to pop up. We can say, well, we're, we're there too. This is the owner, and uh, you know, how did they hear about us? I could ask them. They say, well, I got a friend that referred me, um, and then I can start asking the questions that that were set up there. You know, um, are you are you at home during the the summer months? You know, so this is going to apply to what we're going to recommend to them as part of this energy audit. Do they have plans around um, enhancing things? Now you'll notice there when I check this, if I uncheck it, you know that that changed, right? So because I said I've got plans, you know, later in in the deal, or I can jump down to it. What are the plans, right? And so so we can say, yeah, we've got them. We're going to do weatherization. Um, we're going to do appliance recycles and and uh, a refrigerator replacement. Um, so you can really come into dynamically building what that wants to be and also reducing the training that's required for your field workers so that the form becomes an intuitive natural part of their work and it's not um, you know something they have to learn how to do and, and as they um, you know answer certain things required fields are built in validations are built in all those kind of things the native controls you see for the type device, you know, are there. Um, so we could say this home was built in 89 type, um, gas leaks present. If I say yes, um, you know, it could, it could open up different pieces. You can also see picture of the front of the house. So in this case, I can say, uh, you know, let's take it. And you can see it's actually activating the, um, the camera controls. I'll rotate the camera. So now we're looking up at my webcam. Take a picture of that. And you can see that embeds that in there. Now that also is putting it as an attachment, and it doesn't stop me from coming in as part of the application and attaching um, additional pieces. So maybe I want to come in and attach either an image or a video. So say we'll say we're going to do another image, and it's going to open the camera controls up for us there. Um, and then each one of those can be tagged. You can define what what is you know the type of pictures that I'm going to allow into the form, right? So you not only what types, but are they required or not required and things like that. So you really get to control, you know, what it is you're looking for. Um, and then as we go through and, and kind of, you know, if we say other, you can see, well, then it's pulling up. All right, well, I want to know, 
what it is and how old it is, right? But if I say, you know, we don't have any, well, then I don't ask that question. So, so you start seeing that the whole um, intelligence factor built into the form. So you're 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 you know really removing the the training requirement uh, around it. Um, we'll go through some of these pieces. Uh, some of it's just basic data collection, but here you'll notice a, another area that that you might run into is you know how many refrigerators do they have on site? You know, and so you can kind of set the year, the make model, and and add as many as you want. You know. Uh, and, and you can see that kind of, of capability anywhere in the, in the form if, if you have multiple row type, type needs. And again, that's no programming to kind of make that, that work in there. And again, just makes it real intuitive for, uh, for the data collection piece. Right? And so you could come through and say, you know, here's all the different pieces um, as they're setting plans up. You know, you could, we, we covered that already. And then you could even come in down to the signature aspects of it. And so now I could come in and say, you know, I, the contractor who just went through, did that. You know, I could come in and actually sign it, hand the device, you know, turn the device over, let the customer come in, and, and he could sign it, you know, customer, and put his signature in there. And now, and now we've got it. We both kind of agree to it. If I come in and hit submit now, the application is going to basically tell me that no further changes can be made now. Had there been, now as we were going through it, validations were, were happening, but if there were things that we had missed, maybe there was an attachment we needed or something we hadn't done yet, that's going to tell me right here, right? So it's going to stop the submission before I put in there. In this case, it's telling me it's all good, the signatures are applied, and I can go ahead and hit submit. And if I hit submit, what's going to happen there, if I actually hit it, it's going to actually synchronize back up uh, so it's going to store in, into the local secure database first, and then it's going to synchronize back up. Now, as you remember, we were already connected, and so you can see it starts the synchronization automatically. So it's an automatic type um, uh, aspect that's going to happen. So one of the, the benefits from doing that is we're going to immediately, if there's something that needs to be um, to be done, if there was some information in there that needed to be acted on quickly, then I'm going to act on it as quickly as possible. So, so in this case, an energy audit, maybe there's an opportunity to sell someone uh, some additional services, and we can act on that quickly. If it's you know an inspection of of a of a home, you know, and and I find a problem, you know, we could fix the problem quicker, and 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 you know, not have the the renter sue us and things like that. So, there's a lot of benefits, um, you know, to to doing that and getting that information quickly. So that's kind of a one use case, and we kind of you know bounce through that pretty quickly. Um, let's go in and, and look at a couple other use cases um, real quick. So I'm going to click back on our task list. Uh, one thing we might do is actually you know uh, use in in the case of like a government caseworker who's going out to visit. Again, you can see you know the the address of where they're going to go. I could click map to 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 go to that, um, and then I could click open and actually go to the data collection application that that. Uh, is being asked for me to uh, to do. So now we can come in and see the uh, you know the child services screen. Um, we can see the picture of the the child. So this is actually pre-populated with um, with a picture of of um, the the child, and so we know exactly what they look like. And, and uh, as we're doing the inspection, and again we we are also recording where we're at when we're doing this. And so now if I come in and, and say, now we're going to take a, a, a fresh picture of the child, take picture, open up the controls, and I'll pick it up and take a picture of the, the child. So now we've got our, our child picture. We put it in. And now now for the records back in the, in the the um, back on the server, we're going to have a fresh picture you know, for the date that we're doing this particular audit. And again, now we go through, we see the caregiver information. Uh, and, and again, what this really drives is, is depending on what you want to collect out in the field, you can control that application and do that really quickly. Um, same here, we, we see um, some, some tasks that were given to us um, to do for this particular visit. So these were as a result of the last visit where I'm supposed to check grades, get a copy of the report card. Um, so I could actually take a picture of that, attach it with the attach tab, and then say, yep, I'm done with that piece. And then I could start going into my, my visit information. So I did it unannounced and, you know, all kinds of information around that. Um, but, you know, again, it's very intuitive to use. So it's going to ask base questions. 
and then if I come in and answer them different ways, then it's going to ask additional questions, where if I answer it other ways, I'm not going to see that, right? And, and that could just continue to tree and, and tree, um, you know, as you go through. So multiple questions, and it could just keep building on itself depending on what you're saying. So a lot of, a lot of um, all the intelligence and business rules that you want to uh, put in place are, are there, which just makes it easier for the field worker. And it also increases the adoption rate for the field worker to want to get rid of their paper and use uh, a tool like this, right? They see it as a huge advantage to themselves, right? Because they're, they're, they're getting items pre-populated. It's intuitive. They don't have to worry about filling it in wrong. And from the organization perspective, you're making sure that the data is clean as it's coming back in, right? So it's a win-win across the board. Um, so again, I could follow all the way through, uh, you know, this particular guy, uh, submit the, the piece, or I could even come in and say, look, I'm going to save an exit, so we'll save where we're at, maybe we're breaking for lunch with the, the kid, we're going to run and get something to eat, I can do that, and it'll just park it, I can come back and complete it, um, you know, as we need. Similar uh, aspect, but a little bit different look to the... Uh, to the application would be uh, this this one that we did. Um, so I'll open this up. So this is more of a change of role. So this would be someone actually going out into you know, very remote areas. Definitely have to be offline to, to be able to do this. Um, and you'll see the navigation on this guy changed a little bit. Um, across the top, you can see the, uh, the the menu. So so I can you know just tab across that way. And again, we see prefill. Uh, as I'm filling it out up in the top right corner, I'm seeing you know who I'm filling it out for. Um, but as I move through this one, as I as I start in inspecting the different sites or, or areas of the site, you'll see it's actually building the score for me as we're going through. So all the calculations and aspects like that are in there. So I've got a score. Um, you know, I could say that's satisfactory, you know, satisfactory. And if I say unsatisfactory on any of these, it's going to say, okay, now you told me it's unsatisfactory, so I need you to describe it to me and take a picture, right? So again, you know, show me why that was unsatisfactory. And, and again, I'll pick the camera back up. I'll just take a picture of the webcam. But you can, you know, describe this is what I saw, you know, put your notes about it, and then move on to the next piece. And again, I could move down there, or I could be, um, you know, navigating across uh, the, 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 you know, the navigation pane, you know, uh, at the top. And again, we could come in and get to the end as the inspector. I could sign it, or I could have the the well manager, you know, whoever the required signatures could be. You know, I could put those in place, hit submit, and then it's going to tell me no further changes, and I could go ahead and submit in. So, you know, again, you can see really uh, intuitive, easy to use. And again, we're looking at assignments there. If we go over to the forms, you know, we can see the different type of forms that we could be. It could be a sales, new setup. It could be um, uh, medical recreation. We see a lot of this uh, out in the field where you've got nurses traveling to um, particular, you know, homes and things like that where, you know, they could come in for the patient, be able to come in and say, okay, we've got an issue with some of the medicines. What all are they taking? We could start going in and, and putting, you know, they did a change to this medication, what it is, and then they're also taking this medication and also taking this medication. Build that all into the form and, and then sign it as the nurse and then submit it in. And basically, as soon as it's back into the, to the organization, there can be rules back up against the data that says, oh, wait, if we see this, these two drugs conflicting, we know we've got an issue. Let's get someone alerted right away. So, again, you're saving... Um, you know, potential risk to the organization by, by getting that quickly. So again, sales, um, health and home, um, government, uh, finance, setting up applications out in the field for brokers and agents and things like that. There's just a wealth of, of, of areas that this could be used. Um, now one of the things I want to kind of highlight real quick, let's jump over. So one of the things that we did was, was actually put a um, the, the the work into you know we submitted our our um, energy audit and that actually gets routed to someone in the back field in the back office right so we could actually go in and, and uh, look at that particular item and, and see um, 
you know, where it is and, and kind of where what's going on with the workflow aspects of it as well, right? So that's that's another thing. So any of these forms that you're putting in, transaction manager is going to make sure that that it is um, delivered and and pushed to um, to the right people at the right time. Now, one of the other aspects that I think is real important to to this is the ability to actually build these applications. So we're going to change roles here a little bit. We're going to log into um, Composer, which so now we're out of a field worker. We're kind of more of the business user defining one of these applications. Let's build one from start to finish, deploy it out to the, to the app, and see how quickly we could do that. So what we're going to do is create a new form with, with Composer, which is a web-based tool. And we're going to call this Webinar FW for field worker. We could come in, choose a template. We could choose the structure, styling, and uh, color theme that we're going to go with this. We're just going to take standard. And you'll see here, include um, field worker support. We've got that check, so we know we're going to be OK to make that work. I click Finish. And what Composer is really going to do for us here, based on the templates that are set up for the organization, it's going to drop the right logos in, the right color schemes that are approved, put it all in place, and, and then I could start building the, the application as the business, right? Um, so I'm going to come in and drop uh, drop a section assistant in here. So we're going to, for this demo, what we're going to do is get uh, customer information. We're going to have address, and uh, we'll have the uh, uh, inspection detail that we're going to look at, and uh, then we want them to sign it. And so let's put that in the form, finish. And what we'll see is it drops those, those particulars in there. It already gave us an instructions. I'm not going to take the time to build instructions for field worker. I'm just going to take that out. Now you can see here the structure is what's in the form. The middle um, aspect is what uh, a wireframe rendition of what it may look like. And then over here is my palette of things that I can, I can drag onto the form. And when I drag onto the form, I can drag directly to the, to the wireframe or I can drag to the hierarchy. Where I want this to be. So we're going to put name here and you know for the address let's come in and, and we'll grab a pre-built block. We'll drop that in place. These are these are reusable blocks that um, that are at the organization level and they're inherited so any changes to it I'm going to inherit the changes um, so we can see that in there. Now let's put a yes no question on our inspection so we'll say um, is area clean and uh, we'll drop that in place. And then we want them to be able to sign it. So we'll pull up. Um, here we're going to sign on the glass. So we're going to give them the signature pad widget. We'll put that in place. And now we've got our form. So really, this quickly, I could now start working with um, you know, my business sponsor and say, OK, you know, here's what the form's going to look like. right? And so I could preview this inside of the, the, the Composer application in PDF um, in uh, HTML for, for uh, desktop or HTML for um, mobile devices. So here I could look at, and they may say, you know what, I don't really like this blue. Is there any way we could keep this from um, from scrolling? You know, so we could come in and change the, ad, you know, on the fly really, and come in and say, okay, let's make this a uh, wizard top tab, and we'll change the color scheme to be silver, so we give the chefs a, a different color scheme. And again, real quickly, and even potentially real time with the business sponsor, we could do this, and then they could look at it and say, you know, okay, yeah, this looks great. This is exactly what I want this to look like. Now they come in and say, you know, okay, well, if someone says the area is not clean, I'd really like to get a picture of that. Um, so can we do that real quick? And so what we would do there is let's put a container in on the inspection side, and we'll say this is the not clean container. And a container is nothing more than just a, 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 a box, if you will, to hold um, things. And I'm going to uh, assign a rule to that. Now, one of the things we know we want to, to, um, to put is our um, picture aspect. So we can go down and look at our field worker. So we can see there's a field worker um, tab here in my um, palette. And I want to grab a thumbnail. So I'm going to drop the thumbnail in there. And Call this the not clean pick, and then we want the button to take the picture. So we'll drop this in place. 
we'll just call it take picture, that's fine. And then we really don't want this to show up, that picture, unless they said answer to that. So I can just click on that box that, or the you know, not clean container that I put in place, go to a rule and say that it's rule based, click edit, and just navigate to the is, is this clean question. And if we say no, then, then we want that rule to be invoked, right? And so that quickly we've kind of built our, our application with native integration to the camera, with logic, and we're ready to publish that out. So let's go ahead and publish. And again, I'm building this in real time, uh, actually on a server. So we're going to push this out. We're just going to push the HTML version. We don't want the, the PDF version of it. We're just going to push this to our demo server. And here you'll see it actually pop up a different window. This is actually where it could be. It doesn't have to be. It could be a transition in um, roles. So this could be an IT person who's having control of, of how this is going to be. And so we'll drop this into a, uh, an organization. We know we want this to be in our field worker application. And we can just call it webinar FW, which is what we called it. And we'll go ahead and import that in. That basically takes all the assets and all the logic that we built as a composer um, form developer and drops it in place. Now here you can see I've got form promotions, so testing, you know, emails to the testers, manage deployment schedules, production dates, all that's kind of built into Transaction Manager. Everything you're going to need to manage it. Now we're going to cheat it. We're going to take it past all that, assume it's ready to go production. We're going to take it out of test mode. And then the other thing that we want to do is basically give it group access, right? Who, who has access to this one? And we're going to grab that webinar group that we created for that particular user and really give it to them. That's really the only person that we want to have access to that form. And so really at that point, we've created the form, we've deployed it, we've made it active, we've set it for that particular user. And so if we come in and actually synchronize our um, device, there it is. You see it pop right there. So there's our webinar form that we just did. And now if we open that guy up, and click on open, what we'll see is the form that we designed. And so you see that laid out with the navigation. Now we didn't put a lot of fields on it, but we can see, you know, I could put a name, address. As I'm going through the inspection, you can see is the area clean. I say no, it's not clean. And we see the take picture button comes up. And so if I click that, we're integrating into the deal. I'll take a picture of my not clean desk. Put that back in place, and then say, yep, that's what I want to use. And so now we've kind of stored that picture in place, and, uh, and we could actually come in, sign, and, uh, and submit. So real quickly and easily, we could go in, create the integrations we want. Um, if we came back over here and actually hit submit, we would see no further changes we'd actually be able to submit. That's submitting it all that data, so the XML data that we created, um, the actual PDF flattened version of that form, everything is being sent to Transaction Manager. Transaction Manager is now going to determine where should it go, um, you know, what, what workflow does it deliver, what email does it send, um, does it assign another form to somebody else does someone need to approve it. All those kind of rules are, are defined into it and handled. And again, that doesn't matter if it's coming from field worker or from uh, from a from a web self service portal or a web page. All right, so so we saw real quickly how we can we can build those applications. Um, so really, and and, and Rod kind of hinted on this. You can build those quickly, even if you don't build all the the back end integrations to start with, but just get the get it off paper and get it onto a device. And even if you don't have the tablets in place, you can still design. Um, to, to make that work. And, and I'm going to kind of just show, this is just, uh, that's not it, that's my PowerPoint. I want to just pull this over. This is just kind of highlight. So here's, here's a portal, and you can see it's built for, you know, a, a web page, right? So this is me on a website. But if we simulate going down in size, you'll see it start being very responsive. Even down to, once I go past that threshold, it now hides the menu under a menu button and stacks the different pieces. And that's really going to allow me to go all the way down to that phone factor, right? So that's what we mean by responsive design once, 
have it work anywhere you go. And if you know if you happen to be in the in the desktop world today, it's going to work just fine. And our desktop client allows that person to take the take the laptop out into the field and be completely disconnected and still work with it. So they can still synchronize up in the morning, take the laptop off, and and, and go to work. Um, so so that's what we kind of mean by that. So if we if we kind of reflect on what we talked about there, the top reasons you know that I think why Avoca Transact mobile field worker really makes sense is is the time to market, right? We saw, granted, we didn't put a lot of fields into that, but we still created a, a an application that was used out in the field with camera integration. GPS would have been just as easy. We can do those really quick and keep the business close to that. So time to market is just huge. Uh, and then we're tearing down the risk, right? Instead of starting with this big development project and having to, to manage it, we're falling inside of using this mobile platform to build this. And, and again, you got to keep in mind, it's more than just the mobile platform. It's the whole transaction. So it manages everything around the transaction as well as your web interactions as well uh, are all managed. And that's really reducing our risk and cost. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the business agility, having the business closer to it and not having to say, here's what I want to have. And then somebody in IT or, some, or a contractor trying to figure it out. And, and work together to try and build an application that takes a long time, you get the business closer to it and the business can be agile, agile to, to, to as factors change, as new opportunities arise, or as new risk arise out in the field. If you see certain things, you can write rules against it, ask new questions so you can you know, learn more about and be more intelligent in the field. You just, it's a constant improvement and it allows you to be that, uh, that way, you know, continuous improvement. And then obviously it'll work on uh, any device, both bigger footprints, small footprints, Android, Windows, uh, iOS, so so all that. And then the consistency of the developed applications. Um, you'd be amazed at how many organizations are, are going out and building these mobile type applications and they're, they're contracting different people, both internal, external, and the look and feel comes out to be totally different. And, and they're recreating the wheel for each one of those. And by taking a platform like Avoca Transact and taking advantage of all the things that are built in to handle the complexities around attachments and uh, you know the integration points and business rules and logic around that and leveraging the platform along with the templates that you're going to provide your builders you can now control your brand as well as the type of functionality right and so you're not recreating signature you're not recreating attachments and all your look and feels are going to be approved um, you know the color schemes, the logos, the you know the menu structures, all that can be approved and then given out to the different people in the field. And then there's not saying you have to have one. You can still have multiple looks and feel, but it keeps you from having you know people going completely off on tangents. So it really gives a consistent um, you know look and feel of the applications and and a consistent brand for you know your organization and your users. Right, it just makes it easier for you know your actual customers and and people accessing you know your forms via website or your field workers whoever they may be contractors employees uh, it just you know makes it nice and, and keeps it nice and clean for them and then if we kind of talk about some of the things you know I, I ran through numerous examples and showed different forms these are just some of the the responses that we got as we've done case studies with with our customers um, you know the resounding thing we hear from, from customers is we got results in weeks, not months and years, right? We were able to make a change in a, in, in a matter of a couple of days to get it completely approved and through where before, you know, we, we even heard from, from some people before just to get a change done on a paper form could take, you know, months. And, and so now they're, they're, they're reaching that business agility they really want. Um, the immediate prioritization and risk issues opportunities is, is really specific to the form that you're putting in place. So, you know, we work with companies who are in the pharmaceutical area where their sales reps, if they uncover something out in the field that is abnormal, they can capture that immediately and it gets reported up immediately, reducing risk and actually, you know, reducing exposure, monetary exposure to the company. And then in the sales world, you can open up all kinds of opportunities as you're out in the field, whether it's a field worker doing service, they might open up new opportunities and let the sales team know or the sales team could open cross sales. There's all kinds of things that can happen in that and that's where a lot of our customers are seeing tons of revenue and tons of savings. Um, and that's beyond the savings that, that Rob talked about. Um, 
you know, Rod mentioned that the, it just getting it from paper to electronic is savings, but you can get a lot just from what you're putting into uh, the type of, of transaction it is. Uh, good user adoption, they like not having the paper form, reduced training, it's intuitive, um, cost and delays of processing that is done, right, and that's a big factor for our customers. And then the form errors eliminated. This is really where you can take that form to the next level and put that business logic into it, put the rules into it to make sure that you what you're getting in is clean. There's no more back and forth. Oh, I need you to fill this out differently. This is wrong. This is done. You filled this section out, but you should have done this section. All that can be baked into it and make it, you know, intuitive, kind of like that TurboTax type metaphor there. So um, that's a big one we hear a lot too. And then the pre-population of forms reduces the data entry barrier. So, um, you know, for the users, they don't have to key things in because they can get things assigned to them and, and pre-population. And if they're even in a connected mode, you can have these forms talking to web services in the back end where it can be, you know, real time pulling data back and forth as well. And then the other thing that we hear a lot is it allowed the organization's development staff to take and own this and, and be able to do it and not rely on outside contractors um, because really it, it reduces so much of the burden and takes so much of the code level away that you just don't have to do it. It's just, you know, it's just not a huge project anymore. And, and so it's allowing the organizations to, to you know, be more self-sufficient and get things done. Um, so with that, um, we can turn it over to questions and answers. Um, thanks for everybody for uh, letting me do that. Thanks, Jeff. That was terrific. I'm just trying to get our questions squared away. Um, one question that we had was, um, are the forms bidirectional so that when it, if they submit a form, can it return a uh, receipt number? Yeah, so you can, so in that history aspect, you could have, um, yeah, and by default, it does return receipt. Now, keep in mind, if, if I'm offline and hit submit, I am doing nothing more than storing it in an encrypted database while I'm there, and it won't actually get the receipt until I come back in line and submit it to you. Well, that, that's the next question, which is how, how and when does synchronization occur when, you, when you're offline and then come back online? So, so you, can, you can set the, the synchronization to be automatic, or you can turn it off and then, and then be able to just synchronize. You know, if, if I tap the little green button that was there, um, that'll that'll start a synchronization. So you can control it when you want, or you can leave it as auto sync, and it'll do it every time you hit a submit or every time you bring that back up. Uh, next question. And so, did we answer the receipt number question, the bidirectional one? Because I sort of vectored yeah, you I, off into. Okay. I, I think so. And you mentioned that there are benefits even if you don't integrate into back backend systems. Could you um, expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, so if you really think about the, the forms, and this really goes for forms in general, just taking forms from paper to a digital uh, experience, a digital transaction, even if you don't handle the back-end integration, the rules that you're going to embed into that form are going to make it zero errors, easier to adopt, more intuitive to use, better customer satisfaction for the person filling that form in, and, it, and if you don't do any integration, it actually makes it very quick and easy to do, you know, so you don't have full straight through mm -hmm. processing. And your back end process is still the same as it is today, but you've still got a huge en enhancement on customer satisfaction, reduced error rates, reduced cycle times, the whole piece. And yeah, higher data quality. Towards, yeah, higher data quality, exactly. Um, one other thing, I kind of you, you mentioned the, the, you know, the bi-directional um, term and, and, and it just had me thinking. So I've had this question a lot as I show the field worker application is people ask, can I, can I design the form to look like I want it to look and, or, or does every question I put or every field I put take up the whole row space and, you know, and I guess there's some tools out there that people have looked at that are fairly limiting. Um, hopefully you got a sense on our applications as I went through that they can look like whatever you want. Now they're still controlled by the, the, the um, you know, you can set it to be responsive. So you can say, I want these three fields to go side by side, but as the, 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 the piece rolls down, what happens to those? Do they go underneath, right? Do they disappear? You can change whatever you want them to be. So, so I just wanted to point out that you can build those forms to look like whatever you want as well. So our question on back-end integration led to another question. So do you provide back-end integration through professional services? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, 
tool itself, so transaction manager, and again, when we're talking transaction manager, it really doesn't matter if it's field worker or if it's my self-service portal or an internal you know, web page or whatever. The, everything's still submitting back to transaction manager. Inside of there, you define delivery services. There's delivery services that are already defined into the application, mm -hmm. um, but if you've got something custom to go to you know, your workflow engine or something like that, you just build that. You build it once, and you're kind of done. So you build that plumbing the one time, and then you just reuse it over and over again. Okay, and next question is, um, can the data field be set to take a geolocation when data is captured instead of having a locate button? Yeah, absolutely. And I just, so, and that's normally how you would do it, right? So normally you wouldn't have a locate button and make the person manually do it. You might, I don't know, it depends on your, but a lot of times you want it to be, you know, as they're filling in the field. So maybe it's even as they fill in this section or this particular field, an action kicks the, ge the geolocation function and, and stores it, and it's just hidden, right? You don't necessarily have to even just expose it to the user. Um, you know, the, the family child services, and we talked about, that's a really sensitive one. They want to make sure those field workers are at the location that child is at. They don't mm -hmm. want them sitting at a local McDonald's and filling out the form, right? So, so that one is, is very important, and it is embedded into the form, and it happens automatically. And that led to, uh, do the branching rules work in a disconnected mode? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let me let me caveat that. So if you build something that is using a dynamic web service to, 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 to go look up, then obviously it's going to need connectivity. But everything we saw, like the if they answered yes here and no here, and you can build as many you know combinations of that logic you want, that all works in a completely disconnected mode. Uh, is the is HTML superior over PDF for data capture, and if so, why? Well, absolutely, it's it's superior. I mean, PDF is is you know, I mean, we're all we're all lovers of PDF here. We've been doing it for years, but it's it's a little bit antiquated. It certainly doesn't work on the mobile right. devices, and there's so much more you can do with the with the um, HTML5, and it's lighter weight, and it's faster. So so there's just a lot of enhancements to. Um, to what it is. Now, that doesn't mean that PDF still doesn't have a place, right? So as I come out of um, doing something with one of these transactions, I'm going to create a flattened PDF for my document record. So I can store that in my record management system, or I can route that to a workflow engine. So there's still a spot for PDF to be used. It's just not going to be for your data collection, and it's not going to be out there on your mobile device. That's too heavy. Still there, Rod? Yeah, sorry, I was talking into my microphone mute. The pictures are coming in so fast. Uh, there's a quite, I don't know if we're going to get to the pricing discussion, uh, Bill. If not, you can send either me or Jake email. I want to keep answering the product questions. But um, we have transaction pricing, what they mean. We have cloud and premise implementation. So um, transaction pricing means that you can get started uh, for a low cost, and then you know you pay on what you use. So you could have as many tests and deployment servers as you need, and we charge you on how you actually use that system. So it's a more in-depth conversation. We'd be happy to get into that with you. Um, can a form be dynamically created by a Java application? I well, so. I, yeah, I, I mean, I guess anything. It's not built into the application that way. That's not what it is. I mean, I showed you Composer, and and, and the benefit there is it's it's a graphical tool that makes sense and allows the person to dictate that logic in there as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to build an application that would do all this. You know, we've kind of already built you the application that helps you lay it out and define those rules without having to do any kind of programming. So I'm not sure exactly why you'd want to do that, but um, it's not there right now by, by design. Uh, if fields are bound to XML, does the schema get embedded into the form a la Adobe Diner, Designer, or does the schema remain at the server and implement data binding on syncing the data? So you definitely have the ability over, even in Composer, you can go in and set the, you know, import your, your schema or your XML structure and do the mapping. Very similar. It sounds like someone's familiar with the uh, Lifecycle Designer, which creates a PDF. So very similar to that same concept. You're just going to go in and do it, and that's going to make the binding um, to it. Now, when you, one of the artifacts coming out of Transaction Manager is going to be that XML payload that was defined by that schema, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just going to be the XML data itself and ready to be 
uh, dispersed to, to whatever. So you're going to have that PDF asset of the full flattened, all the attachments that were put in place, the payment information, um, the XML data payload, who logged in, did they come from a field worker or a website or a portal, all that information is captured by transaction manager and then acted on uh, accordingly and delivered to, to your back end. Terrific. Uh, last question. Can the picture taken be tagged with specific names? Yeah, and so um, when, when I was doing that in the form, um, you, you actually set in that what the picture was going to be, but if I just go in and, and so you're, you kind of tag it, I know that was the child's picture, so I tag it properly. Um, if I go in and actually click the attach button, you're going to have a drop-down list that you define for this particular form of all the different types that it is, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, and I didn't go to it, but on that energy audit one, when, when, if I would have attached another picture, it would have come up and said, is this a hot water heater? Is this a refrigerator? Is this an oven? It had, is it a roof? It's, it had all the different type pictures that I wanted or other. And so that gives you the classification you want for those. You can, you know, then you know, drop it into the imaging system. A lot of times what we see people do too is take that receipt, so the, the, the final form, the receipt with the signatures on it, attach all the pictures into it. Um, you know, they may even create a portfolio out of it. And so that's the PDF asset that they're dropping in place, right? Um, but it, de it definitely does have that tagging capability and, and description and title. Uh, we got another one more question related to the job application again. Can it modify a form created by a composer before giving it to a user? So, Dan, Dave, are you after um, pre-population, the data itself, or did you want to change the structure of the form? You'll have to answer me into the question box. If the answer is you want to feed information, both. Well, feeding information, uh, yes, absolutely, you can do that. Changing the structure, I don't think we're set up to do that today, although this is a server product. We could get into a deeper discussion in, with you and see whether or not that's something that we could do. Right. Yeah, we could we could look at, but but as far as I mean, so that did highlight the the when you talk about the data coming in, transaction manager has a whole host of things that are built for, you know, here's a pre pop, you know, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go run this query and go get information to, to pre pop as as it's rendered or as it's assigned, um, or or even as they're doing things like payment. You know, okay, here's the custom, you know, payment script that happens. Here's the custom, you know, so it all works out of the box, but it's all got extension capabilities as well, right? Mm -hmm. And so so some of what you might be asking um, might be there and you might be able to get where you want, uh, but we're not necessarily trying to change, as, as Rod said, change the structure of the form on the fly. That was, you would build that into the form itself and drive the data that you're injecting into it would change the structure, right? So I could have all kinds of sections. And then as you inject data into it, the data you injected fires business rules that says, okay, now I don't show these sections or I do show these two sections. or you know, So you can make a form pretty dynamic just by the data you're injecting into it. All right, let's wrap it up there. It's 3.04. We've gone over a little bit. I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. Um, send us an email. Let us know what you think. I'm rhodgeman at avoca.com. Love to hear from you. And... Um, and that's it. Let's wrap it up. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll send out some emails on our future webinars coming up shortly. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.